to the Teaching with Creativity show, an insider's guide to using arts integration and STEAM. I'm Susan Riley, your host and the founder of educationcloset.com. When it comes to a maker-centered classroom, whether it's arts integration, project-based learning, STEAM, or STEM, classroom management can make or break your lessons. It's really the bedrock for everything we want to do with our students. It can also be one of the trickiest things to figure out. How much flexibility and freedom do you give? And what if our classroom management skills just aren't working in situations like this? What then? You know, we get told in college and when we enter the classroom that if you don't have good classroom management, you are somehow a failure as a teacher. It's not necessarily stated to us directly, but it's definitely implied that only the greatest teachers have the best classroom management. And this is simply not true, my friends. We all have moments or years when our classroom management is not the best. It changes based on human interactions. And because, you know, we work with humans and not cogs in a wheel, it can be a challenge. So when you're thinking about classroom management and you get that little flutter of nervousness, take a breath. Know that you are in great company. We all have classroom management things that we can work on. So what is classroom management? First of all, it is positive and structured. And those two things are not mutually exclusive. You don't have to be negative to have a structured classroom. And just because you're positive and fun doesn't mean that structure goes out the window. These are in relationship to each other. Classroom management is also purposeful. You're doing it with specific outcomes in mind. And it is not punitive. It's not, if you do this, this will be your consequence. But this is what is so often perceived as classroom management, when in reality, you're just utilizing a punishment model. So let's take a look at how you can achieve these two basic classroom management components for your maker-centered classroom. Key number one is to keep it positive. Start with something as simple as greeting your students at the door every single class. Not just at the beginning of the year, but rather every single class. You should be that smiling face that is greeting them. Whether or not we're having the best day ourselves, it's our job to set the tone right from the beginning. Making it a point to greet your students face to face is a big first step in setting that positive tone and creating a personal connection with them right at the start of class. Another idea is to point out the positive behaviors rather than the negative ones all the time. It is so easy for us to immediately say, I saw that and you're doing something you weren't supposed to do. But it takes us so much longer sometimes to identify and recognize students who are doing something positive. And often, when we do identify the positive, it's as an afterthought or as a way to get classroom management back on track. Like when we say, I like how Sally is sitting today, or I like how John is using his best listening ears. We often use these as a way to get the class back on track. Instead, try flipping that. Identify the positive right from the beginning, as many times as you can. And then you won't have to pull them out as an afterthought because it simply becomes an expectation in your classroom. Finally, end the lesson with something that your students did, did that you and they both enjoyed. Even if it was the very worst class you've ever had, Find something of value that you can recognize and do so as part of your closing. This will leave them with the knowledge that you are seeking out ways to help them, that you're on their side and want to build a relationship with them. Key number two is to step up the structure. We all thrive on structure whether we like to admit it or not, and it is something that we as humans really crave. Now, we don't want to be so boxed in that we can't move so that this is not stifling, but it is like a framework. In your classroom, what kind of framework do you have set up 
Think about instructional delivery, the way that your students hand out materials, and how students transition from one area to the next. That's all part of a smooth classroom management. And it's also part of structuring your classroom management. So again, this goes with that intentionality piece. Being thoughtful about these pieces before your students even walk in the door will yield huge dividends on the back end. Here's a couple of ideas for how to do that. Number one, you can create dedicated sections of the classroom in your space. So this is extremely helpful for those of you who are going with the flexible space model in your classrooms or with the makerspace model. Both are very popular right now, but the problem comes with that structure piece. It can sometimes feel a bit chaotic in these kinds of setups. Instead, if you're going to go with these kinds of innovative models, and I hope you do, consider creating dedicated sections within that space. We all thrive knowing where things are located and not feeling lost in a space. Make sure your students know where materials are located and what areas of the space are dedicated for specific purposes. Even if you're teaching middle or high school level, this kind of structural support still works. Centers are a great example of this, as is a research area or a place to tinker and experiment. You can even have a presentation area in the room where students can share out their work. These all lead to a great working space. Tip number two is to go easy on those visuals in your space. Classrooms that contain visuals everywhere can be hyper-stimulating for students. Instead, it's better to create specific strategic visuals that are high impact but purposeful for specific tasks or information. So that means if, that if you have an anchor chart posted, that chart is helping students to understand your exp expectations of them for a specific task or tool and is also visually cohesive. You don't need for every space on your wall to be covered either. Negative space is often helpful for everyone so that we have a place to relax our eyes before moving on to the next idea. And tip three is to set up a routine and stick with it. <laughs> so often we start with the best of intentions and then we end up relaxing a bit and then something unexpected happens and we really relax those routines. And before you know it, the routines are out the window and our students have forgotten our expectations. Instead, set up a routine and stick with it no matter what. Pick a routine that reflects you and how you teach best. Use the routine each and every class so that students know what to expect. Even if you are in the midst of making and creating and innovating, you have those transitions and routines set up to help save time and to ensure everyone is on the same page. It also allows you to introduce and establish new routines, transitions, or expectations with ease because students already know your current flow. One of the ways I like to do that is with a written plan. I like to write things down, but whatever works for you is fine. You can sketch note this or create a really nice anchor chart, whatever. The point is to write down the plan or the routine and then post it so that it becomes a part of your everyday classroom. What goes on that written plan is the purpose and alignment of classroom management for your students. Why is this an important part of your classroom? This is then followed by a list of procedures and routines. So what is your opening, closing, um, transitions look like? What are the materials that you're going to be using? How do the actual transitions between each part of your lesson look? Then include the rewards and consequences for both individuals and the class as evidence behaviors. Taking just 15 minutes to jot these things down really helps to clarify your classroom management plan, expectations, and follow through. Now, I'm going to include a sample plan in today's show notes that you can download and use for yourself. So be sure to go back to educationcloset.com and download that from our post today. Now that you've got the basics down, let's move to the second part, which is procedures. Developing routines and procedures is monumentally helpful when it comes to classroom management. 
These are separate to strategies, which can be a part of procedures, but are not routines in and of themselves. Procedures provide students with a sense of calm. They know exactly what to expect and what is expected of them. To help remind students of these procedures, having visuals in place that show the routine expected as well as texts that describe it is often helpful. Memes are great for this too, as are images of students modeling that routine. Also, I can't stress the importance of consistency in implementation enough. You, have to, you can't have a different set of expectations for each class. Develop procedures that are followed across the board, and whenever possible, model them through actions rather than words. Everybody responds better to actions over words. Now, how do you set up those procedures? Materials and instructions are expensive, and they're sometimes really hard to replace. So here are some routines for distributing and using materials with students that help them to respect and care for these items. The first idea is table jobs. Providing students with responsibilities help them feel like contributors to your classroom. So change up the jobs depending on the seat where they're sitting in or the color of their table. They can create jobs for materials or you can create jobs for material distribution, collection, and monitoring so that students are policing themselves. Another idea is to use a blueprint. Create a blueprint of what your room or cart should look like with photographs that students can reference. Um, you can also do with this in video form. This alleviates students from asking where things go or from simply dumping their materials in a general area. The third part is the idea of a trade-in. So swap out an item of theirs for an item of yours. They want to take a pencil, think of a swap. This is particularly helpful if your markers keep disappearing or if rulers or mallets end up broken. Exchange the item for something that the student has, like a notebook, a shoe, a bracelet. It's pretty hard to walk out of class without your shoe on, so they'll probably remember to return it and you'll have your materials back. I hope that these tips and tricks for classroom management have been helpful to you today. Remember that this is an area where all teachers need a refresher every once in a while. Even if you knew or used some of these tips already, I hope that today's show sparked a reminder or an aha for your own practice. And if you liked what you heard here, you're going to love our Managing the Arts Integration Classroom online class. It is packed full to the brim with even more ideas to help you keep calm and make her on in your classroom. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time on Teaching with Creativity. Looking to add more creativity to your classroom? Excited by the idea of arts integration, STEAM, and project-based learning, but not sure how to fit it into your busy curriculum? Try an online class from Education Closet. You'll receive a 10-hour PD certificate for each class that you complete. Each training is self-paced, includes lifetime access, and takes place in a modern video-based platform. You can use it on any device. You can learn anything from how to build a STEAM program to classroom management for hands-on learning experiences. It's your year to thrive, teachers. Visit educationcloset.com forward slash courses for more information and to get started today.